All right. On this episode, we have one of the OG original Instagram celebrities, fitness stars, who's gone on to not only create her own fitness programs and personality, has her own app, business, several other accounts and, and deals that you're working on. Uh, Anna Victoria, thank you Hi, so much for, for joining me here out in LA. Uh, <laughs> thank so you for having to me. always catch up. How have you been? Good, great. You know, trying to keep up. Um, how about you? I've been great uh, getting my butt kicked by you at right. some workouts. So I was <laughs> yes. like, it, you know, a, a simple morning workout was not so simple, yes. but you know. Wasn't going to let you get away. <laughs> yeah, I know. Survive, survive. At least it was nice and sunny out and you, you at least took me somewhere with uh, some good views. Right. So yeah, as we jump into everything, obviously we've known each other personally for way too long to count <laughs> and we don't want to age ourselves, right. you know, so. Um, but you know, how did you, you know, how did you kind of transcend into where you are today? I mean, I know came from Northern California, uh, but you weren't always into fitness, a part of fitness, even care about fitness. I know right. the first time I met you, I, you were definitely, <laughs> yes. you, yeah, you were not, we were not doing workouts together. No, it was not more at all. probably out going out and drinking. Exactly. But, <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. So pretty much, um, like you said, I grew up in a small town, Northern California, never really had any interest in fitness or healthy living in general. I don't want to say I didn't have an interest in it. I just didn't know anything about it. Um, and fast forward um, until when I was in college, I started having health problems and um, I went to the doctors. They didn't ask me anything about my diet or my activity level. They just gave me medicine. And I took the medicine and I could tell that it wasn't really fixing the root cause. And so at the time I started dating my then boyfriend, my now husband, Luca, who was born and raised in Rome, Italy. Um, <clears throat> they eat very fresh. Right, for, for those of you that, that don't know Luca, it's like this <laughs> Italian supermodel that she's being modest oh. about, but yeah. Anyways, <laughs> so, so yeah, he, my Italian boyfriend, right, now yeah. husband, you know. Uh, yeah. So, well, um, you know, he's, he, was raised eating very fresh, whole natural foods. And when we first started dating, he came in, you know, this American girl that was downing McDonald's three times a day, you know, and he was just like, oh, something's not right there. Yeah. And I was like, leave me alone. I'm fine. I love it. You know, yeah. and I, I genuinely did. And I still do, yeah, <laughs> honestly. Yeah. Um, but I, it was kind of like having those conversations of realizing that, okay, maybe like what I'm putting into my body, my daily habits are causing my health problems you know, big surprise. Yeah. And so I Shocker. did start. Yeah. Um, we actually coincidentally, I had just graduated college. I went to university of San Diego and, uh, we decided to move to China for a year. And that's where Luca was like, okay, you no longer have the excuse of I'm working full time and going to school full time. You need to start taking care of yourself. And I was literally kicking and screaming li literally <laughs> <laughs> like I remember flailing on oh, the trust bed. Me, like, I have a I visual. Don't like it, yes. You know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I really, really fought against it, but I just decided like, okay, I'm going to give it a shot because I knew that like my dad has health problems. And so right. I knew that if I didn't do something about it now, it was going to get to the point where it was chronic. Like I, I could see that, you know, happening. And I was like, okay, well, let me try to do something about it. I kind of didn't believe any amount of working out or eating healthy was going to change anything. That was really like where my mindset was at. And so I remember being four weeks into my journey and feeling a difference and starting to see a little bit of it. And I was like, holy shit, like this well, works. How did, how, you did know? You, like, how did you even start? Because you know what yeah. I find whenever trying to do anything new, whether it's starting right. a business, even working out, or we all say we're gonna diet starts Monday, you know, the famous last words. Right. You know, how do you how did you even start? Yeah. Like what was the first thing you did? This is a great question because it's actually very different now, I feel like, from when I first started, because this was November 2012. There were no apps, ebooks, or all the programs that are out there today. It was just good old fashioned Google, you yeah. know, and research. And so I've always believed that there are two sides to the story. So for any one topic, you can always find an argument supporting it and an, and an argument negating it. And so I always wanted to research both sides and come to an educated decision myself. So I literally spent hours researching everything from, you know, health, how to eat healthy, how to work out. Um, I remember being in the gym and I was using actually bodybuilding.com, yeah. <laughs> believe it or not, how to do a squat. You know, and I would watch the video and I would go do it. I would film myself and I would watch the video back to check my form and compare with their videos. And that's literally what I did every single workout. I just looked up the how-to tutorial of every single move I did, recorded myself, checked my form, 
and that's kind of how I got started learning about proper form and, you know, that side of fitness. Um, and then just for healthy eating, it was a slow and painful process. Yeah, <laughs> I would say yeah. eating is always the hard part. Well, not for everyone, but for the majority, for right. sure. So um, I just always knew too that I didn't want to go to an extreme. I wasn't the person that was like, I'm going to eat healthy and cut out carbs. Like, no way. Yeah, like, I love yeah. carbs. <laughs> you yeah, know, you're like, also dating an Italian yeah, exactly. or married to an Italian. Right, right. <laughs> so I wanted to be very balanced and just learn how to make healthier swaps. Um, and that's how it got started. No, oh, and so from there, I mean, what I think yeah. is interesting is that you were at the forefront of this whole, you know, social media craze. Yeah. You know, we've had conversations about monetizing social media, creating brands. Uh, really, you were you were one of the the people, the thought leaders around it that spearheaded this sort of transition and jumped on board long before people thought it was cool or it was right. acceptable. So yeah. how did you how did you go about starting? Because I think yeah. it's a lot different today than it, it is it was so back different. then. Yeah, I feel bad sometimes because when people ask me for advice, I'm like, I couldn't replicate what I did. You know, like right. it's sometimes it's just, you know, the time and a place, you know, I don't want to say that luck is plays such a big role because there's so much hard work that goes into it. But, you know, I did start my Instagram account in November 2012, and it was before Instagram was a thing. Um, and I was anonymous for a year on my Instagram account because it was never about me and about what I looked like or posting my pictures. It was about this is what I'm learning, and I know how hard this is, and I want to share what I'm learning. You know, I was so excited about the information. So I was just purely sharing what I was learning on that Instagram account because it was one of the first fitness accounts. It grew to 250,000 followers in six months. Wow. And Two, back in 2013, you know, by the time it was summer 2013, that was a lot. Yeah. That was like, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. and I just remember, I remember hitting um, like the 10K mark and I was like, oh my gosh, yeah. like 10,000 people, <laughs> you know? Um, so I just genuinely was sharing value, you know, yeah. and what I was learning and I just genuinely wanted to help. Um, but about a year into having that account, I shared my personal transformation. It wasn't anything drastic or shocking. It, I did lose some weight. Um, I would say my body composition changed the most, but internally my health changed a lot. And that was the message that, the message that I wanted to share. And um, that's when things kind of blew up. And that's when people were like, you're a person, first of yeah, all, yeah. <laughs> you know, Whoa, because yeah. there's a you're person. You're a beautiful female, yeah. you're here. It's like all the, all the other things that yeah. come with it. So that's when I branched off and I created my Anna Victoria page and just continued to share my journey um, through that. So, you know, now now when you, you know, that's where you started, it's kind of transcended into all these different things, different business lines, multiple different, uh, you have meal prep, you, know, you have everything, everything and anything, you have down to even lifestyle. Uh, you know, what, what kind of has motivated you? Because it started as, you know, you, you had to get a kick in the butt from your, your yeah. husband mm -hmm. saying, listen, you have no excuse, like yeah. quit. You're kicking and screaming. And then you start to build and build and build and build a little bit more mento momentum. And then you, know, you, you said something that I'm jumping onto is it was more about informing people and helping them, letting them know, you know, the changes within your body. And it's not all physical, which most people are obviously fixated with. And, right. and when you live in a world where you have Instagram and everybody, everybody has this highlight reel, like, look how pretty, look how skinny I am, look at where I'm traveling, whatever it may be. What, what constantly motivates you around what, what you've done? Yeah, I think that I just, I don't know if I have the right words to put it into, but I just, I like going against the grain and it's not something intentional. It's just something that deep down, I'm like, I'm not going, to, I don't want to fit in a box. You know, I don't want to be a typical, you know, Instagram girl that's just showing her perfect life. Like I want to talk about the hard stuff, you right. know, and I want to talk about the struggles and that's just always what has motivated me from day one. You know, right. whether it's my fitness journey, currently it's my infertility journey, you yeah. know, like I just, I want to be real. And I, I, I got on Instagram from the very beginning, as I mentioned, it was when I moved to China. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. And I didn't have anyone around me other than my boyfriend, you know, to talk to. And I was starting out on this new journey. Like I wanted to connect with people. Yeah. That's why I started that Instagram account. And so even to today, like, I don't care about the number of followers. I care about the number of people that right. I'm talking to and connecting to. And I think that it all stems from, you know, my first job when I was 16, I worked at Long's Drugstore and <laughs> 
I just genuinely always got so much satisfaction out of helping people. Like even back at Long's, I wanted to stock those shelves as best yeah. as I can to help people find their products. Then I worked in the telecom industry um, and I genuinely loved helping people people with their cell phone needs, you know, like yeah, I just my got- My Blackberry was, my Blackberry yes. game was strong oh. from you. I always got the latest stuff. I was the Blackberry yeah. expert <laughs> yeah, back exactly. in what, 2006? Yeah, yeah. AT&T, uh, Verizon. 2007, yeah, yeah. yeah, just jumping around to all these different games. Yes, right, yeah. <laughs> and I don't know, I just feel like anything that I've done, I've just, I, my my root and anything I do is helping people and kind of the, the subject matter has changed a little bit, you right. know? And so obviously with the fitness industry and, um, just, I think living healthy, it's something that I'm so passionate about because I think it impacts so much more than, than life and so many principles and lessons in your fitness industry apply to, to well, life. Well, like, like what? Because, you know, I think a lot of people, you, know, you look at it and it's just like fitness and, you know, feeling sexy, being sexy and the way people, you know, perceive you, you yeah. know, but you know, I know that there's a lot more right. to it. There's discipline, there's other things that go into yeah. it that yeah. actually transcend, not just within fitness, they're very relevant in business, right. family, the way you deal with issues, you know, yeah. what are, what are some of those so things? I think that first and foremost, like believing in yourself is such like a root, like y you need that, like no matter, like in your fitness journey, like it's so much more mental than it is physical. Um, and I think that's something that people are, are starting to realize. When I grew up, I felt like the, the perception was that it's all physical. And I really was like, I'm not into that. You know, like even if I could look better, like I don't need to, like, I don't think that that's what matters in life, you right. know? Um, so I feel like believing in yourself is something that is so important that you need for your fitness journey, but for your life. And there's so many girls in my community that have started my programs and have said that they have been able to leave abusive relationships because of the strength that they've got from their fitness journey, right. from the empowerment, the mental and emotional strength. They've been able to leave jobs that they hate. They've been able to move places like that's is serious. It just like because you, you end up having a pillar of self-confidence. Yeah. Yeah. I think that it's 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 starting at a point seeing that you want how to get from point A to point B. It's not easy. Like there's so many times that you want to give up and that you push through and it's almost like your fitness journey manifests itself in that you see I can do this. Yeah. I can do I can do what I set out to do and that's when it starts to, you know, go into other parts of your life. Right. So, you know, I, I mean, that's very interesting. I think it's very true. It's just having that pillar piece in order to give you the support and, you know, give you the self-confidence to kind of understand you can push through anything. You can push through a, a bad relationship, an abusive relationship and yeah. leave you and still survive and yeah. be okay. And, and the thrive. world's not in thrive yeah. and the world's not ending. Same mm -hmm. with leaving a job you hate or even dealing with other issues, you know, that, you know, death in the family or, or anything else that may be there. Uh, yeah. You know, when you, but your life is very open uh, for yeah. better or for worse, you know, <laughs> yeah. and, and yeah, you, know, you talked about the personal journey that you've gone yeah. through some of the stuff with infertility, which we'll talk about in a second, but mm -hmm. that also opens you up to a ton of judgment. Yeah. And, you know, I can only imagine the trolls, yeah. the haters, you know, how does, how does somebody go? Because at every misstep, like, let's say you fall off the wagon because you're on vacation in Italy. Yeah. I mean, people feel, you know, they make themselves feel so guilty for enjoying that part of their life. Or people right. say like, oh, look, you gained five pounds mm -hmm. or, you know, what I'm sure you've heard it and seen it all. I mean, it's happened to me, like, <laughs> yeah, you know, but yeah. the, I, I would say that what, what I've done is I come right out. I'm like, hey guys, I've gained a few pounds. You know, yeah, I've yeah. been enjoying my time in Italy <laughs> yeah. eating pasta. And I think that that's important for someone in my position to come out and say, hey, my life is not fitness. Perfect, yeah. Yeah, it, it's, yeah. It's not perfect. It doesn't revolve around fitness. There is more to life than fitness. And I feel like it is so important for that message to be spread in the fitness industry, because with social media, young, you know, girls, young boys, even, you know, people that are our age, see all these people that seem like they're on it all the time. Yeah. And, you know, they're working out every day, eating healthy every meal. And that's just not realistic. It's yeah. not possible. And I don't want anyone to live that kind of life. Like right, 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 <laughs> no one right. should be that living. Doesn't sound like fun. Yeah, it doesn't. And so I think it's important to come out and say, it's okay to gain weight. It's okay to go through ups and downs. Like you are not your weight, first of all. Like that's not, that it's not what matters in life. I'm much more concerned about you being a good person than how much you weigh or but what I, you look like. But I think it's a little bit deeper than that because, you know, when you look at it, you have to, you have to have self-confidence one in within yourself and then, you know, kind of not listening to the naysayers. 
But I think what you're saying is you're coming out straight up and being like, yeah, I gained a few pounds. <laughs> that bread and that pasta is just next level. So I have to have it. Yeah. But I think it's self-awareness yeah. and like, and with self-awareness comes the ability to hold yourself accountable. And then once you, once you have self-awareness and the ability to hold yourself accountable, you don't give a shit what anybody says, yeah. <laughs> you know, at, at all. Yeah. And because you're holding yourself accountable. So you're like, I'm going to own it. Hands up. That's me. Right. Yeah, I think that it's definitely been a, a lesson of also how to deal with the naysayers because I know that I, I have good intentions, but that doesn't right. always, people don't always, you know, perceive that. They and don't if have they context. Comment, yeah, exactly. I mean, I get the worst comments from people who aren't following me yeah, or who aren't yeah. a part of my community. It's like they have no idea yeah, who I who am, what my message is about. And so I just have to remember that like, that's the 1% and to not let that drown out the 99% that are overwhelmingly positive. Right. Some days it, it, it works, some days it doesn't, yeah. you know, it just kind of depends. But um, I think that it's, it's like you said, just to have that self-awareness of, and that confidence of, you know, this is who I am, I know what I stand behind. And even to be able to continue to stand behind that when there are others that are trying to break it down. You know, yeah. I think that's really important. Well, yeah, and I, I totally agree with you. You know, one of the other fascinating things that I've seen, you know, knowing you from back when we were in San Diego to, to today is, you know, you've really become a very successful and prominent businesswoman, you know, and, and you have a whole team now. You know, yeah. we, we were discussing earlier on our glorious hike that you took me on <laughs> that I'm probably yes. going to feel tomorrow, uh, you know, about how the team has grown from yes. two to three. You know, how, how did you, you know, starting in business, you know, yeah. outside of the fitness stuff, and I know that's part of the business, yeah. you know, for, for those trying to start a business, you know, how, do you, how did you break through? How did you even learn what to do? You know, right. because most of the time there's no like one book on how to start your business. Gosh. And I'm sure you've had failures, successes. Oh, absolutely. And there's still so much that I'm learning, but I think that first and foremost, like I'm obsessed with taking care of my customers. Like, and this dates back to my working at Long's, working yeah. at Verizon, AT&T. Like I just, those like customer service, like uh, survey scores. Right. I was like, if I didn't get a 10 out of 10, I was like a heartbroken, you know. Yeah, slam the table, I just, yeah, like, for what me. can I do better? I just, I, I genuinely have always had such an obsession with taking care of my customers and by helping that for me, the business side of it was like secondary. It's like, what you know, obviously we all need to support ourselves, make a living, you know, but that that's never been my primary motivation. And I feel like for that reason, that's why I've been able to get to where I'm at because right. that's always been secondary and I'm not making decisions based off of a business. I'm making decisions based off of my customers and what's right for them. So kind of how I got to where I'm at, you know, I did start, um, I created the Instagram account in China, but then we moved to Italy um, and I did my MBA in Rome. Um, and I remember being in class and this was in 2015 and my class mates were like, what are you doing playing on Instagram? Yeah. You know, like oh, child, that's so cute. It was, oh yeah. Like people did not get it, you know? And so I just was like, you know, I, I knew what I was doing. I knew that I was helping people. Um, again, I didn't really see the business side of it, or at least that wasn't my focus. Um, but people did start coming to me for fitness advice and I got certified as a personal trainer. I created my fit body guides in 2015 and a huge community was born out of that. So Fit Body Guides, FBG, the yeah. FBG girls. Um, and after about two years of the Fit Body Guides, everyone was like, Anna, we want an app from you. Yeah. And so again, I've just been listening to my customers, yeah, you know, I, I don't, I don't want to waste my time on anything that they're not going to want, you yeah. know? So first and foremost, you know, listening to them, what they want. And I think that the biggest challenge has been giving them what they want in a timely manner yeah. because there can be other people that can be quicker to market than you. Um, you know, if you let it fizzle out, then you kind yeah, of you, missed. You, you don't, you, the momentum of the wave. Right. It, the and wave there, crashes, that's kind of it. Yeah, and there have been times that I'm like, I missed it. Or yeah. like, I didn't do it as quickly as I should have, you know? So it's definitely still a yeah, <laughs> learning yeah, yeah. process. But, you know, back in Italy, it was just me on my couch working, you know, on my own. Um, during my MBA, I would go to class from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. I would go to the gym and then I'd be up until three in the morning 
morning answering emails. And Luca yeah. yelled at me, like, you no, know, he didn't yell at me, I yelled back. He told me, you know, <laughs> you need help. You know, ask your sister, yeah. like she's in college, she can work part-time, help you answering emails. And I was like, no, like I was yeah. like, I don't need help. I can do everything on my own because I have such a high standard and high expectation of customer service that I was like, no one can take care of my customers like I can. And that was obviously a prop, you know, yeah, it yeah, was not, not okay. You can't it's, scale your business. Exactly, out. I was creating an, uh, my own glass ceiling. Right. So I did bring my sister on. She helped me with emails. She actually still works for me now. She's our head of operations. Right. Um, and uh, so pretty much we moved from Italy to LA when we realized, okay, this this is really getting real, yeah, you know? Yeah. Um, and we need to start developing the app, um, moved to the US. I was still on my, oh, I had one, one more girl. Um, so it was about three of us for a year. And then within like, an instant we grew from three to nine. Okay. And that's when like we had to get an office and get our own space. And so now we have 12 team members um, and yeah, and still So was that, was that the inflection point where you knew you had to let go and in order to make yourself scalable and really grow this out, you had to bring yeah. in people and you know, yes. even if it wasn't like, a hundred percent to the level you would yeah. do it, like 90% of you is still right. better. Exactly. Uh, nothing in right. order to grow your business. That's exactly it. And it's still something that like <laughs> my, you know, um, Gabby, my sister who, she's my sister, but she's yeah. so amazing. And she can see me when I'm going too deep into something. She's like, Anna, you, you yeah, need stop, to let go. Yeah, it. you need to let go. Like Trust your house, team. Like, cut it out. You know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. So still learning, but um, yeah. So how is it working? You know, I know a lot of people work with siblings, family yeah. members, or even your husband. <laughs> right. You know, oh, how gosh. do you how do you not come home and you know fight about oh, you know, whatever happened? Yeah. You know. I think it's a testament to like we just truly are two peas in one pod that happen to be born on two different sides of the world because we spend twenty four hours a day together every day and we don't want to kill each other. You know, yeah. I don't know, it's just, it, there's just something unique about us too. And I, I, I give him credit, because he's always the I'm one apologizing. <laughs> he's the one who has the patience. I, maybe the should, one. I should reach out and get some tips, oh, yeah, <laughs> just yeah. so I can make sure he's, that I can have a long lasting happy marriage. Yeah, it really is that, you know, happy wife, happy life. Yeah, and yeah. He's such a sweetheart, so I give him all the credit. Um, but it's I do it's as still, well, for the record, for, <laughs> okay, for my spouse, right. yeah. <laughs> Um It's still not easy, sure, yeah. okay, we fight. You know, yeah, there okay, definitely are does. times we bicker. Um, nothing ever obviously gets too big, but even working with my sister, I seriously, she's just, I was telling you, you know, earlier, she just went and hiked the Himalayas, you yeah. know, with a friend for two weeks. She went backpacking in Switzerland on her. Like, she's just so cool, and yeah. like, she's just a, a great person in her own right. Um, very headstrong, very smart. My brother also, he actually was my graphic designer and my web developer for when I was in Italy. Right. So my brother, I'm one of seven kids. So I have, yeah. a, I have a lot of help. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, so it's, it's interesting. I think that definitely as the business has grown, there are certain boundaries that we have to set because in the beginning it was like, oh, this fun thing that I'm doing, you know, you yeah, want to yeah, help yeah. me out. And it wasn't, you know, I never- It wasn't a real business. Right, so right. And I never, like I said, I genuinely never had like a five-year plan with this or anything. It just every single month and year I've taken what I have and I'm just, you know, making the best of it. And I, I don't want to say it's just that because obviously now it is a business right. and it's something that I, a brand that I care so much about that I do want to expand and to scale. Um, so with that being said, you know, working with family, there are boundaries that you have to set and set expectations, but vice versa. Yeah. I, I need them too. You yeah. know, it's not just for them. We're kind of figuring it all out together. Yeah, so. no, 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 I understand. Makes yeah. perfect sense. <laughs> Go through a lot of those same, same challenges yeah. myself. Right. Uh, so, you know, one of the things that you most recently have been very public about uh, is around infertility. Yeah. And, you know, I think that you, know, you you've done a great job of creating awareness around it. Uh, another gentleman, Brian Mazza, he's also he's also come come forward and kind of been very vocal about the challenges that he's had with it. You know, and I think it's great because as you and I were referencing, the more I hear about it now and you actually people are becoming more comfortable talking about it, it's more prevalent than people think. And, yeah. and you know, it is very a very emotional roller coaster for for a couple. And you know, I've been watching, you know, a lot of what you've had there. We've had conversations around it. So what what what, you know, what have you been going through with that? How, how have you approached it? And then, you know, how did you have the courage to go so public around it? Yeah, so just to kind of 
summary. So um, Luca and I have been trying to conceive for 19 months. I never thought I would say that. I never yeah. thought that we would be here. Like I said, I'm one of seven kids. My mom, you know, yeah. <laughs> clearly had no trouble. <laughs> and I always wanted kids. And I just always was like, oh, fertile Myrtle, it'll be yeah. no problem. So when we started trying, um, it was like, oh, in a few months, I'm gonna have a, a big announcement to share. Yeah. Six months in, hadn't happened, started doing a little bit of research. You know, they say on average, it takes 12 months. And still in my head, I'm like, that's not gonna be us, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. but okay, That's good average. to know. Right, um, 12 month mark, went to the doctor, got referred to a, for a reproductive endocrinologist. Um, long story short, unexplained infertility, literally every single test they run is, it's perfect, it's perfect, everything looks great, you're doing everything right. So at about month 14 is when I decided to share it publicly. I had been battling with it for a few months because I was like, this is something that's affecting my fitness journey. Like I'm not, my doctors told me to kind of take my workouts down a notch, eat a little bit more, gain some weight, see if that's, what was it? It wasn't, yeah, <laughs> you know, but yeah. you, you, it was like in my head, I'm like, I'll try anything. I don't care right. if I need to gain a few pounds, yeah. you know, I'd eat a little bit more, sure, yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, so I did decide to share and it was hard, but I knew again that it would help people and that if I was struggling, then I'm sure others were too. Um, the response was overwhelming. I don't want to say that in a, in a bad way, but it was just like so much. I couldn't re, I couldn't carry on all of that emotion that right. I was getting, you plus, know. Plus, plus your own emotion. Exactly, you yeah. So I, I like was so, so, so grateful for it, and I read like er, almost every single message that I got. But it, it was a lot, and it just shocked me to see how how prevalent this is, and right. how many you know couples go through this. Um, we're still going through it ourselves. I just announced yesterday that we are starting IVF this month. I actually start to get into details, yeah. I start injections for all the hormones next week. Um, and then I have my procedure uh, in uh, the beginning of August, so. So, I mean, you, you, do you look to your support system, obviously your husband and family around you? I mean, it, it's it's gotta be tough because everyone deals with, whether it's you know infertility or other issues that are going on with their lives. And everyone thinks that, you know, everything has to be siloed out and, you know, it, they can't touch one another and I, it all touches you know, your life. And, and, you know, how do you, how do you, how do you wake up every morning and stay motivated to continue to run your business being, you know, the head of, head of a, a large company now dealing with this personal issue, you know, because a lot of people are dealing with, oh, with yeah. those sort of things. I'm not going to lie. There were some days I didn't want to get out of bed. I didn't go into the office for a few weeks. And like my, my team was just kind of like, Oh, what's going yeah, on? Like, yeah. where's Anna? And I was just like, Oh, I'm working remote, working remote, you know? And it was hard. And I actually almost feel like putting that limitation on myself made it harder yeah. because I was just like, okay, I need to, chill. I need to chill, like, stop, stop stressing me out. Stop bringing me all these problems, you know? And it was actually compounding itself. You yeah. know, it was when I stopped that whole cycle and was like, this is what it is. I got to deal with it. Yeah. Suck it up. You yeah. know, like, yeah, this sucks. Well, it's like but like the like, reality. There's yes. a reality is it is what it is. So exactly. that's, that's your reality. Now, now how do we work and move from here? Right. And once I kind of got to that realization point, that's when things kind of started calming down a bit. And, um, so, you know, I think that how do we get through it? We just, you know, one, one day at a time, one foot in front of the other, like I said, still kind of figuring it out. But I think that Luca as a support system has been just everything, you know? Yeah. And I think in this context, you have to be on the same page. Like right. you can't, like, I do think it's really important for both cup, for both the man and the woman or who, you know, whoever, both parties to, understand what's going on because I've read stories of where the woman is like, I'm doing all the injections myself. I'm doing everything on my own. My husband is kind of checked out. He doesn't really get it yeah. and how alone that is, you know? And so, you know, I mean, to each their own, you know, yeah. different couples, you know, different strokes, different yeah, exactly. Folks. But you know, I think that communication is just the number one key. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I think communication is critical within your personal life, moving through challenges. Obviously we reference when working with friends or family yeah. and then communication is key kind of, you know, with any relationship that you have with right. friends, coworkers, whatever it may be. And it sounds easy, right? No, yeah. You know, just totally like talk so about easy. it, just talk but about it. Yeah, it's not it. that easy. So it's just, it's, it's being okay with having those really tough conversations. So do you, like, how do you, how do you feel? Because, you know, I think like being in the fitness world, fitness is something that 
that really transcends and touches everyone. Everyone always has something that they're insecure about. And there's some part, you know, like me, I'd be like, oh, I've got a big nose. And I'm kind of like, well, fuck it. It is what it is. Like, yeah, I even went through great. a time where I'm like, oh, I'm going to get a nose job no. go here. And then somebody, I actually went to one of my friends who is a plastic surgeon. And he goes, the fuck are you doing, dude? And excuse my French. But yeah. he goes, be you. Like, your life is good. You're successful. Like, what do you need to change who right. you are for something? And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with plastic surgery. But yeah. everyone has, like, their own insecurities. You know, and I know being in the fitness world, you see and hear a lot of them, most of them physical. Were there, were there insecurities that you've had that you've dealt with that you had to kind of push through? Yeah, I would say that like physically, like my stomach area has like always been like I, growing up, I never had like the flat tummy that like all the girls did. Yeah. And it was always like, oh, if I could just have a flat tummy, like my, my problems would be solved, yeah. you know? <laughs> and, but it was nothing that I ever like hated myself for. It was just like a nice to have. Yeah. And so there's two sides of it where like one is like, once I got it through my fitness journey, my problems weren't solved, yeah. you know? Yeah, like yeah. nothing changed yeah. in my life. And so I think that, like first and foremost, like you have to be content with who you are because if you change anything about your physical self, who you are on the inside is still gonna stay the same, right. you know, and you're still gonna be just as unhappy as before, or you're gonna go on to the next thing that you wanna fix. And right. so I think that that is really important to realize. Um, and then I think that just, it's like, we're all, we're all different and that's what makes everyone beautiful and unique. And I think that changing things that make people unique, you know, I don't, I don't want to be like everyone else. Like I said, I kind of right. like breaking the mold, right. you know? So I think that there's beauty in that beauty in, in, in being unique, but in regards to the fitness industry, unfortunately it is largely revolved around aesthetics and what you look like. And especially in LA, you know, and people in the fitness industry these days are doing all these fat transfers and everything. Yeah. And it's just like, what is going on? You know, I think that the human body, how, how our bodies naturally are, like, like you said, I have nothing wrong with plastic surgery as well. Um, as long as you, as long as you're doing it for the right reasons. Right. But when it comes to escaping living a healthy lifestyle, that's kind of where I draw the line, yeah. you know, where I'm like, uh, whatever you're doing, it's going to come back. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it's, not, it's not going to go gonna away be forever. a waste of money. Yeah. So, um, you know, so essentially from, from your advice, as far as how to, how to face your insecurities, it seems as though, you know, one, when you look at your stomach, uh, that was your insecurity. And then, you know, all of a sudden you got fit and you had a nice little flat tummy and then you realized, oh, that wasn't then like the panacea. Now it's back. No, I'm just kidding. You look great. <laughs> you know, so what would be your tip for somebody dealing with something that they're insecure about, whatever it may be to kind of get over that hurdle? Yeah. You know, it's interesting because I see a lot of women start their fitness journey for these reasons. You know, so many women tell me, Anna, I started your programs to look good in a bikini. But what I found through the journey is that there's so much more than that. So honestly, honestly, like I haven't said this before, but if you want to work out to look good in a bikini, do it. Yeah. You know th what? There's nothing wrong with wanting to yeah. look good. And I do feel like someone who is a body positivity advocate, I think that that is something that like I haven't spoken to as much because I care so much about women and people loving their bodies as they are, but still take care of yourself, of right. course. And I've kind of, I don't want to say I've neglected, you know, the, the power that comes with wanting to look good, but you know, I haven't spoken to it as much, but I have realized that it is 90% of the reason why people start a fitness journey. So if we have to get people to start working out and taking care of themselves for that reason, so be it. Right. Because a lot of the times, start. exactly. As long as they start, a lot of times they'll get looped in by that. I, I hope at least, and they'll stay because they love themselves and they realize that there's so much more to their fitness journey than how they look. And because of their, the mental and emotional strength that they gain from it, or because of, you know, being empowered and how that does transition into other parts of their life. So, you know, I don't think that there's anything wrong with if you have an insecurity, you want to fix it, go ahead, you know, like to attack it head on, attack it, but keep in mind that there's more to the journey than that. And I, I just hope that at least if they come into my community, we're going to be talking about a lot more than what you look like. And as long as you are in a safe place like that, that brings those messages to light, then I think they'll be okay. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I mean, I, I think that it's, it's very powerful when you look at it and, and it's it speaks to your character and your intent. Like the, there is more to it than just the one thing you're fixated on, I think is the message that you have. And there's more to life than you know, your stomach or your nose right. or your abs or yeah. your butt or your hair or whatever it ends up being. 
So right. I have to ask you one last question. Yeah. You know, you, you've traveled around, saw a lot of your journeys throughout yeah. Italy. You've said you've lived in China, yeah. uh, which would be a whole other conversation oh, to man. learn about. But <laughs> where, where do you want to go or what are some of your, what, what is your favorite place that you have gone and where, where's something oh, on the bucket list from a man. travel standpoint? Greece and Croatia are two, pe two places I haven't been that I really want to go to. Have you no been? No way. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, you have to oh, go. Oh, I know. <laughs> we almost, so we went to Lake Como for our three year wedding anniversary yeah. you know a few weeks ago or a I few months ago right after you right, thanks yeah. for the tips <laughs> yes um and so we almost went to croatia or greece but the weather it just wasn't as warm so still yeah. need to go um and then but i would say my favorite place Luca's gonna kill me because it's not Rome, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's gonna be in Italy. I would say my new favorite place is Puglia. Have you Puglia. ever been? No, I've you never guys, been there. It is like How a do you new spell that? P U G L I A. Okay. So it is like southern. Puglia. Yeah, it's like southern Italy, but it's on the um, the eastern. Someone can correct me. I believe no, it's, it, it's on the Adriatic Sea. Yeah. Um, so we just went for the first time. Luca had never been either. Actually, it's where his gramp his grandpa is from, I believe. Um, and we went to Borgo and Yazia. It is one of the most beautiful hotels I have ever seen. I don't. Do you, have you heard no, of it? No, I have oh, not. But the hotel boss I, is learning something really, new every day. Really, I'm teaching yeah, the hotel yeah, boss you something. Are, you are. Okay, so Borgo and Yazia, you have to check it out. And it's pretty much like a, an ancient, ancient Italian city that was like remodeled, reconstructed and turned into a resort. Like oh, wow. it's so beautiful. Um, and so we went in Puglia, it's like a region as you know, most of Italy where there's a bunch of little towns. So right. when you go to Puglia, you can go to um, Alborobello, which is a, a really cute town, um, Polignano a Mare. Um, got that dialect down. <laughs> dialect trying, game is strong. <laughs> There's, if you, I, I swear you've seen pictures of it. There's um, a restaurant that is, uh, it's an agro, a grotto. Oh, and yeah, so it's I, on the I cliffs. Saw yeah, 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 so yeah. we went there. Okay, that's where it was Food at. wasn't that great, but you, you pay for the view. You go yeah. for the view. And so I, I recommend going for the, <laughs> for view. the view. Yeah. Not the food. So yeah, so that is our new favorite place. That's where we're like, when we have kids and we have vacation, we want to come here. All right, so. it's going to be coming a generational place yes. for Anna Victoria <laughs> and Luca. Well, Anna Victoria, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, thank you for the workout earlier today Absolutely. here in LA. You killed it. I'll be, feel, I'll be feeling it tomorrow, so you'll get my complaints via text uh, <laughs> okay. because I'll be sore. Those stairs. Uh, and, you know, in all seriousness, congrats on all your success. I know how thank genuine you. of a person you are. I know your intent is always to help people first, uh, then yourself second. And I think that that's why you have built such an amazing community and following. And congrats to you you and Thank your success, you. the wonderful husband, yeah. and of course, Rigatoni. So. <laughs> <Yes. Yeah. laughs> Thank so, you so Thank much you. for having me. It's great. All right. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> Bye. And that's a wrap for today's business class. Enjoy today's podcast. Feel free to leave a review on iTunes or share this episode with a friend. Want more hotel boss in your life? Who doesn't? Subscribe to my YouTube channel or follow me on Instagram. Simply look up at the hotel boss. Until next time, hotel boss out. <laughs>